Hi Christy, uh, this, my name's Adam. Um, I hope you can see this. Um, this is a really, uh, this is the second time I've tried to record. Um, and it goes dark by the screen. I don't know if it's, well yeah, because it's that way when after I after I fix it. So anyway, um, wanted to make a video in response to your dream that you had. Uh, you said you you know if anybody um, if anybody had any other interpretations to let you know. And I also had a couple more thoughts. Um, it very well could be that the doves flying out. Um, Wow, it could be a dual meaning. I mean, because the good Lord, um, he uses layers in dreams and visions. There's there's things that represent more than one thing. So it definitely could mean the church leaving. Um, at the same time, it could be the Holy Spirit being taken away. Um, the only thing there that would kind of the only thing there that would give me pause would be the Holy Spirit is, is one rather than a whole bunch. If you saw a dove flying away, that'd be one thing, but you're seeing a lot of doves, which the saved, have, the saved has got the Holy Spirit, and I believe it's those that are going to be making the first trip out. Uh, now... I am a, I, honestly, I am not exactly sure what I am. I'm kind of like you in some respects, um, except I personally, uh, I've, after studying it and drawn my own conclusions rather than what I've been taught in church and everything like that, uh, I, I believe in the thousand year reign. Um, I don't see the reason for rapturing the church at the end of time when when Christ is going to uh, return anyway. Um, because at that point, it's the end. If there's no thousand-year reign, uh, at that point, it's, it's the end. So why would we be raptured? Why would he make us go through the tribulation and then rapture us? Because... It just doesn't seem that that would that's how God would he would let us go through the rapture uh, or let us go through the tribulation and then raptures seems like rapture would be a way of catching us out prior to or in the middle of or early so that we wouldn't have to endure that um, there is a verse in scripture that that I, I use to ju justify the uh, pre-trib kind of idea um, or at least uh, early and that is uh, that is uh, where it talks about that the children are not appointed to wrath and wrath is going to be exactly what God pours out onto the children of Satan it is so if we're not appointed to wrath, yeah, he could divinely protect us. But it also, I mean, but there are things in Scripture that do speak to the catching away of the church, uh, like the whole wedding supper. And that's what I wanted to get into to, to give you an idea of maybe something that you had not thought about how some of these questions that you had how could they be how could we be raptured and yet be held for 10 days and now of course and see that's another thing i don't understand because 10 days in, in prophetic time 10 days would be at 10 years um i don't think it would be weeks Ten weeks. I mean, it could be ten literal days, but it just that. Does, I mean, I don't know. Um, but here's how. Here's how I've come. I have an understanding of the 
but being that I'm a, a millennialist, um, I do believe in a rapture, and I think I'm using that logic or using that theological structure, if you would. I'm no theolo theologian by any means. Um, I have come to a different conclusion about the about the uh, parable of the ten virgins. I've studied it, and if you think, of it, it, I've heard people say, "Well, that was just the wedding party," but if to hear them described, they were virgins. Now, the virgins are virgins in in scripture are always uh, associated with those that have been purified cleansed washed in the blood virgins and so if that's the case then there has to be a little something more I mean it, it has to kind of speak to a if they are virgins if they are the bride then it it would kind of make sense what I'm about to say. It talks about that they didn't have enough oil in their lamps because the bridegroom tarried. Um, so it means too that at some point their all their lamps had oil on them. Um, my understanding I think that the oil is the Holy Spirit um, the fire I think would be good works this is just my this is just my my own um, so when they, they went out and they come back and Christ had already came and got got the bride and they knocked on their door knocked on the door and they said please let us in and he said uh, you know go away because I, I never knew you and at that point there was weeping and gnashing of teeth now if you look at it from the context of all ten being being the church that would make sense especially in a pre-trib rapture if you're a saved person and you are awaiting the rapture or the bridegroom to come and take you back and he turns you away or leaves you here to endure and suffer with the with the damned or with the uh, how much weeping and gnashing of teeth would go on how much repentance would happen just like that from backslidden Christians? Now, I'm not talking about those that sin on occasion, I mean, you know, fall on occasion and, and get back up. I don't think that he's talking about that. I think these are, are people that have accepted Christ, but they don't. They, uh, he said, I don't see myself in them. I don't see myself in you. Well, what is, what does Christ look like? He looks like love. He looks like righteousness. He looks like giving, uh, generous, or uh, he looks like compassion. Um, all these traits that, that, that Paul talks about, um, I believe it is, um, love. We have, and, and, and I think that's what the light what represented. Love. And, and the oil that burns, the fuel to that is the Holy Spirit. So there's a lot of people there that, I mean, out there that doesn't have the uh, Holy Spirit. And even though they've accepted Christ as their Savior, and I think they're going to be left. It does say that they're that it's that they will make it, but it will be with smoke on their clothes, or the smell of smoke on their clothes, or something like that. 
which makes sense because it would be those that were left to endure the tribulation. Um, and you talk about a, you know the great revival. I think the great revival is going to take place after the uh, after the revel after it takes place. I think people that thought they were saved and really wouldn't uh, are going to figure out real quick once the rest of the church disappears. Um, you know, it talk, here too, it talks about one will be taken and one will be left. So that's about half. That's literally half of the five, five wise, five foolish. One in the bed, two in the bed, one gets taken, one gets left. Um, so if you go by that, uh, if you go by that methodology, um, and I think that maybe I, th I think the 144,000 are those that are going to be left to preach uh, during the tribulation uh, for the first three and a half years and they're going to be uh, there's going to be a, a lot of people saved and I think God's going to hide them away for three and a half years during the reign of the Antichrist but it also talks about that during that time people will be given their heads for their testimony so maybe there's going to be a lot of people that that give their life to christ that, that don't get hidden away and as god says you know okay i i want you to put up or shut up you're gonna tell me you're gonna you're gonna show me who who where your loyalty stands so that's my and then and then after the millennial reign of course i mean after the af, uh, after those seven years then christ comes back destroys the antichrist sets up the kingdom for a thousand years um because we come back with him um uh, so that's i'm i'm out of time here but uh uh, I hope I can record. I hope I can upload this. I'm going to be about out of memory on my phone, but I hope that makes. I hope that makes sense. I hope that sheds a little light. So I guess I'm a early to pre early or mid trib rapture rapture is. Um, I hope you can see this video. <laughs> Thanks a lot. I hope it's been of some education or use. <laughs>